Hi, uh, welcome to the second tutorial for Access users. In this tutorial, we're going to look at planning and creating the data tables for a database. So I'm just going to close this uh, one we looked at in the first video, the overview. So shut that down and uh, that leaves with a completely blank access screen. I'm going to go to Excel now and just show you something that's relevant. And what I have here is a table of data in Excel. And I'll be using this table for some Excel tutorials later on. But what I want to do here is take this information and convert it into an Access database. And although I won't go through all the details of how that might be done, it's self-evident, I think, that there are three clear areas of information here we can make into tables for the database. One of those areas is the actual thing that's being sold or in this case rented which is the movie so the product needs a table and we also have customers who are going to buy that product so the customers might want their own table of information name address etc and then we also have the thing that connects those two together which is the actual transaction the sale or the rental process so that would involve the date of the transaction, what film was rented, who, who rented it, how much they paid, etc. So what I've done here is I've just done a, um, a high-tech illustration to show you that process or the result of that process if you like. And you can see here on the left we have our customers, on the right we have our movies and the middle there is the process of connecting the customers with the movie, the transaction, the sale. And so in creating this access database, I'm going to have three tables. And what I'm going to do here is show you a notepad document. And this document just details those three tables. So you see we have the movie table, the customer table, and the rentals table. And within each of these categories, the, the what I have detailed are the fields that will make up the table. So we have ID, we have the title of the film, what studio made the film, is it, was it a Western, science fiction, so genre, movie director, the star, and the running time. So those are things I've decided to add into this table. Obviously I could you know, add things and remove things as I like. In the customer table, I've got an ID number again, just so I can uniquely identify the record. Customer name, customer address, telephone number and date of birth. So fairly simple stuff. The name could be broken down into first name, last name, middle name even if you want. But I've just left it as name because I'm just going to use the person's first name. And the final one, this is in some ways the most important, the rentals table. This actually brings the other two together and records the transaction. So I have a rental ID, which again uniquely identifies a record. I've got the date the rental occurred what movie was rented and what customer took the movie out. But the critical thing here is that the information for movie rented comes from the movie's table and the information for customer comes from the customer table. So those bits of information, although they do appear in the rentals table, are coming from other tables. And this is the power of access. It's the way you relate tables of information together that gives it the flexibility and convenience that people use it for. And finally, we also have on the rentals table, rental fee, due date, return date, or sorry, um, has it been returned, the return date, and a late fee if it was applied. Now, um, you'll also see in brackets on each of these entries here, the actual data type. So auto number for ID, uh, text for the movie title in this case. Now it says look up there, and that means I'm going to have a list of existing entries that I can just simply select from a list. Some of them are number, and that means I might want to do some calculations with them. Some of these are dates, which means I can also do calculations with those as well. And some of those are currency, which is basically a number format but with currency formatting applied to it as well. So, again, the data types by listing these in advance, it just saves me a little bit of hassle of trying to work out what data type I want as I create the database. And so, by going through this planning process, and deciding what tables I want and within those tables what fields, the field name, the data type. It saves me time and helps me to keep things organized. So there's my plan if you like for the database. Now if I go back to access 
and bring in my notepad we can see there I need to create the movie table and the customer table first in order that they can link into the rentals table however before I create the tables for my database I need to create the database itself so I'm just going to minimize that notepad window there so I can just click on the the new button there on toolbar come across to the sidebar that opens up click on blank database and I'm going to call this database Reds Video Classics and uh, we'll call it Sales and Rentals. There you go, covers everything. And click on Create. And there's our database window all ready for the first table. So that concludes this tutorial on planning and preparing for your database. And in the next tutorial, we will begin to create the tables. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you found that useful and see you next time.